Okay, welcome back everyone. Cube coverage of AWS ReMars 2022. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. Got Eric Fulmer, Vice President of Marketing at Boston Dynamics, famous for Spot. We all know, we've seen the videos, zillion views, mega views all over the internet. The dog robotics, it's famous, rolls over, bounces up and down. I mean, how many TikTok videos are out there? Probably a ton. Oh, Spot is, <laughs> Spot is world famous at this point, right? <laughs> so it's uh, you know, the, you know, the dance videos and all of the application videos that we have out yeah. there, Spot, is, Spot is, uh, has become world famous. So. Eric, thanks for joining us on theCUBE here at Remars. Um, this show um, really is back, we're still a pandemic hiatus there, but it's not, it's not part of the re's, it's re-Mars, re reinforced with security, and then reinvent the flagship show for AWS. But this show is different. It brings together a lot of disciplines, but it's converging in on what we see as the next general industrial space is a big, Poster child for that, obviously in space, it's highly industrial, highly secure. Machine learning's powering all the devices. You guys have been in this, been a leader in the robotics area. What's this show about? I mean, what's really happening here? What, if you had to boil the, the essence of the top story of what's happening here, what would it be? So the way that I look at this show is it really is a convergence of innovation. Like, this is really just the cutting edge of the innovation that's really happening throughout robotics, but throughout technology in general. And you know, part of this cultural shift will be to adopt these types of technologies in our everyday life. And I think if you ask any uh, technology specialist here or any innovator <laughs> here or entrepreneur, they'll tell you that they want their technologies to become ubiquitous in society, right? I yeah. mean, that's, that's really what everyone is, is sort of driving towards uh, from the perspective and we, of, we, of And we got some company behind us, look at this. Oh, there we go. All right, I don't know if we there's, a, <laughs> there's one of our spots. <laughs> it's got one of those back there. <laughs> All right, so sorry to interrupt, I got a little distracted by the, by the um, beautiful thing there. So they're, they're literally walking around uh, and, and literally engulfing the, <laughs> the, the show. So when let's, I look at the show, that's what I see. Let's see I see the future a, of get technology. A, get a camera on our, our, our photo bomb here going on. We get a photo bomb action. <laughs> It's just super exciting because it really, it, it humanizes it. It makes you, everyone loves dogs. And, you know, I mean, people have more empathy if you kick spot than, you know, a human. Because there's so much empathy for just the innovation. And, but, but let's get into the innovation because let's, the IoT tech scene has been slow. Cloud computing and Amazon Web Services, the leader, hyperscaler, they dominated the back office. You know, data centers, all the servers, digital transformation. Now that's coming to the edge where robotics is now in play, space, material handling, um, devices for helping people who are sick or in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So a whole surge of revolutionary or transitionary technologies coming. What's your take on that? So I think you know, data has become the, the driving force behind technology innovation. And so robotics are an enabler for the, tech, for the, for the data collection uh, that is going to drive IoT and manufacturing 4.0 and other important um, edge-related and, and uh, you know, futuristic um, technology innovations, right? So the, the, the driver of all of that is, is data. And so robots like Spot are collectors of data and, and so instead of trying to retrofit uh, a manufacturing plant you know, with, with 30, 40, 50 year old equipment in some cases with IOT sensors and you know, you know, fixed sensors throughout the network, we're bringing the, the sensors to the equipment in the form of an agile mobile robot that, that brings that technology forward and, and right, is able so, to assess. So explain that a little slower for me. So the one method would be retrofitting all the devices or the, the hardware currently installed. Sure. Versus almost like having a mobile unit next to it, kind of thing, or? Right, so, I mean, if you're looking at antiquated equipment, which is what most yeah. you know, manufacturing plants uh, are running off of, it's not really practical or feasible to, to update them with fixed sensors. So sensors that specifically, uh, specifically take measurements from that machine. So, so we, uh, we enable Spot with a variety of sensors from, uh, from audio sensors to listen for audio anomalies, thermal detectors to, to look for thermal hotspots in equipment, or visual detectors where it's reading analog gauges, that sort of thing. 
So by doing that, we are bringing the sensors to the machines yeah. and to be able to walk anywhere where a human can walk throughout a manufacturing plant to inspect the equipment, take that reading, and then yeah. most importantly, upload that to the cloud, to the users who can dog. apply some. <laughs> it's a service dog. It, it, it really is, and it serves data for the understanding of what, how that equipment is operating. This, in, this is big agility for the customer. Get that data, agile. Talk about the cost impact of that, just alone, what the alternative would be versus, say, deploying that scenario. Because I'd imagine the, the time and cost would be huge. Well, if you think uh, you know, about how much manufacturing facilities put into the predictive maintenance and being able to for, forecast when their equipment needs, uh, needs maintenance, but also when pieces of equipment are going to fail. Mm -hmm. Unexpected downtime is, the, is one of the biggest yeah. uh, uh, money drains of any, t of, of any manufacturing facility. Yeah. So the ability to be able to forecast and get some insight into when that equipment is starting to perform less than optimally and, yeah. and start, to, uh, start to degrade, yeah. the ability to forecast that in advance is massive. Well, I, th I think you just went on just the in retrofit cost alone, never mind the downside scenarios of, of uh, manufacturing problems. All right, let's zoom out. You guys have been pioneers for a long time. What's changed in your mind now versus just a few years ago? I mean, look at even five, 10 years ago, the evolution, cost and capability, What's changed the most? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think the accessibility of robots has really changed, and we're just on the beginning stages of that evolution. We really are. We're at the precipice right now of robots becoming much more uh, ubiquitous in people's lives, and that's really our, our uh, foundation as a company, is we really want to bring robots to mankind for the good of humanity, right? So if you, if you think about you know, taking humans out of harm's way or, or you know, putting robots in situations where, uh, you know, where, where it's assessing damage for a building, for example, right? Yeah. You're taking people out of, the, out of that harm's way and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and really standardizing what you're able to do with technology. So we see it as, as really being on the, the, the very entry point of having not only robotics, but technology in general to become much more prevalent in people's lives. Yeah. I mean, what, you know, 30 years ago, did you ever think that you would have the, the power of a supercomputer in your pocket to, to you know, which, which also happens to, to uh, allow you to talk to people, but it is so much more, right? So the power of a cell phone has changed our lives A computer forever. that happens to be a phone. You know, it's like, come right. on, what's going it's, on it, that? That's almost secondary at this point, <laughs> it really is. So, I mean, when you think about that transition from, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think we're at, the, we're at the cusp of that right now. We're at the yeah. beginning stages of it. And it's really, it's an exciting time to be part of this an entire industry. Before I get your views on integration and scale, because that's the next level we're seeing a lot of action and um, growth. Talk about the use cases. You mentioned a few of them, take people out of harm's way. What have you guys seen as use cases uh, within Boston Dynamics, customer base and or your partner network around um, use cases that either you knew would happen or ones that might have surprised you? Yeah, one of the biggest use cases for us right now is what we're demonstrating here at Remars, which is the ability to walk through a manufacturing plant and collect data off various pieces of equipment, whether that's a pump or a gauge, uh, or seeing whether a valve is open or closed. Yeah. These, are, these are all simple, mundane tasks that people, are, that, are, that, that manufacturers are having difficult, difficulty finding people to be able to perform. So the ability for a robot to go over and do that and standardize that process is really valuable as companies are trying to collect that data in a consistent way. So that's one of the most prevalent use cases that we're seeing right now. And certainly also in, in cases where um, you know, spot is going into uh, uh, buildings that have been uh, structurally damaged, or uh, you know, assessing situations where we don't want people to be in harm's way. Yeah. Uh, you know, bomb in, in scares or any kind of situation with police or you know, threatening or dangerous situations. Sure, and fire departments as well. I mean, yeah. fire departments are, are becoming a huge uh, you know a huge user of the of the robots themselves. Fire department in New York recently just. Uh, uh, adopted some of our robots as well for that purpose, for search and rescue applications. Yeah, go in, go see what's, go see what's in there, see what's around the corner. It gives a very tactical edge capability 
for, say, the firefighter or law enforcement. I see that, I see the military applications must be really insane. Sure, from a, from a search and rescue perspective, absolutely. I mean, uh, Spot helps you put eyes on situations that, that, that will allow a human to be operating at a safe distance. So it's, it's really a, 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 great, a great value for protecting human life and making sure that people stay out of harm's way. Well, Eric, I really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing your insight. One, one other question I'd like to ask, if you don't mind, is you know, the, one of the things I see next to your booth is the university piece, and then you see the Amazon you know, material management, I don't know what to call it, but it's pretty impressive. And then I saw some of the demos on the keynotes, looking at the scale of synthetic data, just it's mind blowing what's going on in manufacturing. Amazon is pretty state of the art, I'm sure they're a customer of yours already. Um, but they look complex, these manufacturing sites. I mean, it looks like a maze. So how do you, I mean, I could see the consequences of something breaking to be catastrophic, because it's almost like, it's so integrated. Is this where you guys see success, and how do these manufacturers deal with this? What's the, is it like one big OS? Yeah, so, yeah. so the, the robots, because the robots are able to act independently, they can traverse difficult terrain and, and collect data on their own, and then you know, what happens to that data afterwards is really up to the manufacturer. It can be delivered from the cloud, mm -hmm and you can, uh, it can be delivered via the edge, yeah. um, you know, uh, edge devices, and, and, and really that's where some of the exciting work is being done right now because that's where data can scale and that's where um, uh, robot deployments can scale as well, right? So you've got, instead of a single robot, now you have a, an operator deploying multiple robots, yeah. monitoring, controlling, and assessing the data from multiple robots throughout a facility and it really helps to scale that investment. All right, final question for you, this is a personal question. Okay, you, I know so you're at the booth over there, and you have a lot of fan base. Spot's got a huge fan base. What are some of the crazy things that the, these nerd fans do? I mean, they have to want to get selfies with the Spot, they want to, I jump over the fence, I see don't touch the dog signs everywhere. Um, the fan base is off the charts. What are the crazy things that people do to get either access to it, the, there's probably been probably some theft, probably, attempts, uh, or selfies, tell, share some funny stories. I'll, I'll say this, my, my team is, is responsible for <laughs> fielding a lot of the inbound inquiries that we get, much of which comes from the entertainment industry. And as you've seen, Spot has been featured in some really prominent um, you know, entertainment pieces. You know, we were in that Super Bowl ad with Sam Adams, we were on Jimmy Kimmel, uh, you know, the, the right, before, right during this, the, the, the Super Bowl, uh, time period, so the, the amount of uh, the amount of entertainment um, value uh, pitches, or, okay. the amount of entertainment value is immeasurable. But the the number of pitches that we turn down is 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 staggering. And when you can think about how most companies would would probably pull out all the stops to to take, you know, to to be able to execute half the things that we're just from a time perspective, from a resource perspective, okay, so not always an a, able to so do. So Spot's an A-lister, I get that. <laughs> is there a B-lister now? I mean, that sounds like there's a market developing for Spot 2. Is there a Spot 2, a, the B-player come in, so, uh, understudy? So, I mean, I, Spot is always evolving. I think, <laughs> you know, the, 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 physical, the physical stature that you see of, of, of Spot right now is, is where we're going to be in terms of a, the hardware, but we continue to move the robot forward. It's, it becomes, more and more advanced and more and more capable to do more and more things for people. So. All right, well we'll roll, roll some, roll some B-roll uh, on this, on theCUBE. Um, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Fossil Dynamics here on theCUBE, famous for a spot, and then here in the show, packed uh, here in Remars, featuring you know, robotics, it's a big feature hall. It's a set piece here in the show floor, and of course theCUBE's covering it. Thanks for watching, more coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host, after this short break.